Buy Boolean bars. No, 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 you should buy coins. Keep it at your house. No, 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 you need to put it in a safe location somewhere. Do ETFs. No, don't do ETFs. Do a vaulting service. In fact, get it out of the country. Oh, all these different opinions. So I've been working this through. I'm relatively new at this whole stacking thing and uh, trying to organize my thoughts. In certain situations, all of those recommendations may be just fine. This video will quickly roll through the different reasons we might collect precious metals, and then we'll talk about which types of investments may or may not be suitable for each category. Hopefully this will help you. The first bucket is what I call crisis currency. But for some reason you have difficulty getting cash and uh, maybe you're not able to use your normal debit and credit card. If you go down to your local grocery store today, would you be able to negotiate them to buy some food uh, using uh, a silver round? No, they're not going to take it. Um, they don't know how, how to do that, right? Well, if a hurricane blows through or an earthquake comes, uh, are they suddenly going to be able to take silver and gold? I don't think so. So you're going to want to have just plain old cash. So the first one to discuss here is just plain old currency, your local dollars from issued by the government. So how do you like these? These are toy ones, right? Copy, copy. I love that. By the way, you don't want to do $100 ones in the United States anymore because these hardly anybody takes these. So we'll eliminate that. So ones, fives, tens, twenties, fifties. This would be probably your most liquid way to get through a crisis. So let's assume that the crisis has to do with the US dollar, the United States government or something, your government. Well then having a currency issued by the government may not be what you need and it may not help you much. So nobody will want them. These are gold backs. So I love these things. Uh, different states are doing these now. I think these are going to be highly barterable. Also, uh, be aware that uh, you can buy half, half ounce rounds. Uh, here's a quarter ounce round. Here's 10 ounce rounds. So you can do fractional silver. Premiums are very high on these, but you know, if you're preparing for a crisis, you would, you could care less for paying that premium if you truly have a crisis. With constitutional silver, you have to go another step and do the additional math because it's not 100% silver and how much does it weigh and what's the percent. So you've got to go through and educate the person you're bartering with if they don't already know. So a crisis currency, you probably need to have at least a couple of weeks worth of it close by. Now let's talk about short-term saving. Now, typically when you're doing short-term saving, you want to make sure you don't lose your principal. You don't want to stock market, you know, it can dip and go back up. In the long term, it rises, but in the short term, you can have dips and such. Well, the same with silver, silver and gold prices. So you want to be careful using silver and gold as a short-term investment. But there's more to talk about here. Take, for example, a silver round. You're paying a pretty high premium for this. Right now it's, you know, we're what, 15, 18%. If you're buying uh, uh, US Silver Eagles, you're paying maybe up to a 40% premium. Well, if you're only gonna have it for a short time, you know you're gonna sell it. That would be just silly to pay that kind of a premium and then turn around and sell it. So I do think physical precious metals are not practical for a short-term saving vehicle. Probably what you wanna do is ETFs, something like uh, PSLV or even SLV or GLD. For short term, those probably are just fine. And the advantage of that is you literally can, I mean, in 30 seconds, you can log on to your computer and initiate a sell transaction. And in a couple of days, the money's available. And then you can transfer it to your bank in another couple of days. So you can have your short term money, you can have it available within consistently within a week. Uh, like if you buy fractional gold and silver through one of the dealers, you know, you, you, you put the money in there, they store it physically, but you can liquidate it pretty quickly. That's also a pretty fast option. So in fact, that might be faster than uh, cashing out an ETF. Now I actually did this recently. Um, I consolidated, I closed out an old 401k I had and consolidated the money into an IRA. So I did the rollover, but I wasn't quite sure what I was going to invest the monies in when I put it in the IRA. Well, I, I knew we we're in a generally bullish cycle for silver. So I went ahead and put it in PSLV and put it there and some of it's still there. And then as I'm deciding what I'm doing with investing the monies, I'm taking a chunk of it, selling PSLV and then going ahead and reinvesting it elsewhere. So there's an example where it's short term. The convenience of using an ETF is extremely high and you can use it inside of your IRAs and your 401ks and 403Bs and that sort of thing. So the number one rule of short term saving is don't lose your principal and liquidity, being able to buy and sell it quickly with minimal premiums and overhead. So the next category is collectible coins. Now it could be collectible 
silver statues or other collectibles. But anyways, we're talking precious, precious metals here. So I'll use the term collectible coins as an umbrella term. So you'll forgive me for that, I hope. So typically what we mean by that is something like this here. So this is a, um, this is a coin from a shipwreck and it is um, uh, bronze. Now the coin itself, the metal inside the coin is worth a fraction of uh, just a couple of pennies probably. But I paid dearly for this. <laughs> Why? Well, because it has additional value. It has nostalgic value. Um, it has historic value because it was in a shipwreck and recovered. And uh, it's been certified. So you've got this whole process where uh, reputable people have said, yes, this truly was from a shipwreck. So I'm not just getting scammed on it. Let's yeah. use some other examples here of collectibles. This is one ounce. Uh, James Bond 007 silver silver bullion bar and I purchased this boy I paid dearly for this you talk about premiums and shipping and the VAT tax and all kinds of things I, I bought this directly from the Royal Mint in the UK shipped it across the world and uh, after I received it then the US dealers started selling these so anyways and a lesson learned there but nonetheless this has uh, value beyond the one ounce of silver. Why? Because people like the the series of movies and all that. So sentimental value, right? Why would I buy that instead of just a plain old round? This I can get more silver for the same amount of money. Well first off, I wanted this. I like it, right? But if I'm gonna sell these, it would be painful for me to sell this at spot price. Painful. I expect to get more than spot price for this. This, I could care less. I'll sell it at spot, right? But this, I expect to get more. But if I can't find the right buyer at the right time, then I'm not going to get the money out of this that I hope to get out of it in the future. That's an important concept when you're doing collectibles. You cannot ever be in a hurry to sell your collectibles. Don't use your collectibles or plan to use them in crisis situations because you will not get your premiums back out. This is the Asahi just plain silver round. And this is the Britannia. Beautiful coin. I love I love the Britannia, by the way. But I paid a little bit extra for this. Not much, but I did pay a little bit extra for this. Which again, you have to find the right buyer in order to get that collectible value back out. So collectibles should be long-term investments. Don't put yourself in a situation where you're forced to sell your collection in a hurry. If you want to do a collectible coins, time goes by, they they typically do become more valuable. Hopefully that increases at a rate beyond the rate of inflation. Um, rareness, right? And now for our next category, long-term saving. You have a lot of flexibility here. Silver, gold, bullion, coins, store it yourself, store it in a vault, um, ETFs, assuming it's an ETF that survives long-term. Um, all of these are probably pretty good options. I don't have really strong recommendations. I do think physical metals probably are my personal favorite for long-term. I do not intend to use ETFs for long-term savings. One of the key characteristics for long-term saving is that the amount you pay in premium becomes less important over time. You assume that the price of gold is going to increase over time, right? You do, we do, we all, that's part of the reason we, we buy it. We don't know that it will, it's a saving, not an investment. But we hope it'll, inv it'll increase in value, at least at the rate of inflation. So, as time goes on, the amount of dollars you paid for premium now, 40 years down the road, really doesn't matter that much. Right. Premiums become less important. Now, what does become important is your carrying cost, your storage costs. Uh, if you're doing an ETF, you have a certain amount every every year, I don't know exactly, monthly or whatever. Anyways, they a little bit of your precious metals get scooped away, just a little bit, uh, to pay for the storage costs and such. And that's fair, right? There are storage costs, so they have to collect that. The last category here is dynastic wealth. Dynastic wealth. I got this. <laughs> I got this term from Lynette Zhang. You gotta love Lynette Zhang, right? Uh, I love listening to her. And but she talks about um, her precious metals. She's trying to build a legacy, uh, a dynasty, uh, to set her kids and grandkids up with a good head start in life, and to give them an advantage. Um, and I just think that's fantastic. So that's uh, so I've adopted her term here, dynastic wealth. And that has to do with uh, money for your kids. 
Um, physical precious metals here are pretty handy in this situation. Um, if you pass away, uh, your kids can gather and they can literally open the safe deposit box and one for me, one for you, one for you, one for me, one for you, one for you, right? Done, right? There might be some tax implications if you have a large estate. Um, if you do ETFs and such, you do have the uh, ownership issue. So you've got beneficiaries for, for your account and then you've got to go through that process to get uh, uh, power of attorney and, and you may have to go through probate and all that stuff in order to be able to transact and withdraw money from your ETFs. So that's kind of a difference there. Dynastic wealth works really well with physical bars. Just boom, 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 right? <laughs> I love it. I hope you find this helpful. I personally have had to go through this process. Everybody's saying, do this, do this, do this. And I've had to kind of organize my thoughts. So this is how I've come out with it. I hope you find it helpful. The God of all that is, loves you and is your friend. Embrace it, go for it. Have a great day.